Hi, welcome back. I've had a few weeks off for various reasons. I'm going to make amends for that through the winter and get some regular videos out. So today we're going to be looking at SDR, or Software Defined Radio. And these are a small device that you can buy. It just plugs into a USB port on a computer. The other end plugs into an aerial. Here's one I bought earlier. And you can get lots of different aerials for lots of different reasons. So there's a full write-up about this on my blog. So this, I can go into more detail there than I can here. But we'll be looking at what the uses are and what you can do with an SDR. And it's quite an inexpensive hobby because the SDR radio you can get for less than £30 or $35. Aerials, you can literally stick a piece of wire in it and it will pick something up. To pick up anything a bit better, you're going to want a proper aerial. The one that came with it was garbage, so I bought this one, which cost me 20 quid, $25, and it needs an adapter to plug in, but it's uh, this is the sort of thing that amateur radio people use. It's a much better quality product. So let's be having a look at how all the things that you can do. So if, with a, a computer or a laptop, you can just plug the SDR radio in, and you can plug it in directly, but if you get a short USB extension cable, this one's two metres long, allegedly, one metre long, uh, this will allow you some flexibility. So this is just a socket on one end, and a plug on the other. These things do get hot by design, it's normal. There's a lot of electronics in here, and it's working at very high frequencies. So that can now plug into our computer. And the first thing you need to do is install some drivers. So that's the first thing we'll be looking at, is installing the correct drivers for your SDR. Now mine's a new ELEC COM, uh, Smart SDR, or NESDA. So yeah, that's just a model of it. And you get them from newlec.com or Amazon or eBay. You can buy them at lots of different places. And it, it comes with various instructions. Now, whichever one you get, you'll have to use the correct drivers for it. So only follow my instructions to the letter if you're using this exact same one. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to be installing in Linux. I'll go through the whole thing in Linux. And then we'll go through the whole thing again, but we'll do it in Windows, which I'll make another video for. I appreciate there are more Windows users out there than Linux users. The, the Linux guys like to get their hands dirty. So that's what we'll be having a look at. So the first thing I need to do is to find the right drivers and install them. So I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, so I've downloaded the instructions for my SDR. You'll need to do that for your particular model. And these instructions are specifically aimed at Ubuntu 17.04. Okay, that's a couple of years old now. But with, as with most things Linux, it'll work across most Debian style distros. I'm using Mint Linux uh, for no particular reason. This a bit closer and the first thing we need to do is to plug the SDR in so I'll plug that in down here into my extension lead plug that into the computer ideally into a USB 3 port because there's some fast communi communications going to happen and the faster USB port you use the wider bandwidth we can set it to which we'll come back to a little part and parcel of it. So the first thing we need to do is to open the terminal and inevitably it opens on the and here's our terminal. So my computer's called Mercedes. Various reasons. I don't actually own Mercedes. 
And the first thing they want us to try is to type lsmod grep dvb. So this is just to see if there's any drivers already installed. This pipe character is on the left hand side of the keyboard next to Z and you have to press shift at the same time. So grep which filters and the original use of these was for digital video broadcasting and that did very well because it shows that there are no drivers loaded. So we go further down the instructions and we can copy this one. Oh we can't actually because you need to edit the file. Come back terminal. So we need to go sudo, nano, etc. Mod probe dot D blacklist dash dvb dot com yeah type in our password well you type yours in I'll type mine in and then we need to add blacklist space dvb underscore usb underscore rtl 128xxu and then we can save that by pressing control x control yes sorry control x y and return that is actually going to stop us installing the drivers for dvb digital video broadcast because Although that's what the device was originally used for, or at least what the chipset is used for, that is not what we're using it for. We're going to use it for SDR radio. So, all we need to do now is install, and again, these instructions will be different depending on what your SDR is. You don't have to type dash get all the time. So we are now going to install, for this particular one, it's RTL-SDR. This chipset comes with a whole load of models, makes and models. So don't be surprised if you get a completely different make and the instructions are identical. Uh, it's, it's a specific chipset. that's used by a lot of them. There used, there, there used to be another chipset and that's now been rendered obsolete. So most of them will use this RTL chipset. So that's the driver installed. Okay, so we now need to hook up our antenna. I had an interesting discussion with my partner about the difference between an antenna and an aerial. Just while I'm unwrapping this, and I'm going. This is a mag mount aerial, so there's a magnet in the base, and it will improve the efficiency greatly if you can stick it onto something metal. So if you have a filing cabinet handy, that's perfect for the job. So I now need to screw my little adapter in. Into there, into the SDR. The, normally you would get you would have the right socket on it, it's just because I bought a, an aftermarket aerial. I spent quite a lot of time modifying the original aerial to improve the reception on it. And there we are, so that's all hooked up. Put that somewhere safe. On the floor when it can't fall off. So the difference between an aerial and an antenna. An antenna is an aerial that's used to receive and transmit. If it only receives, it's an aerial. There you go, that's today's useless piece of information. But there's very little difference. Most most aerials are made to transmit as well. So we need to type RTL underscore test. And all, all this... Um, ooh, maybe you have to sudo it. You do. So don't worry about what's going on here. This is just a little test program. And we can see it's found... This is the chipset I was on about the RTL 2838 chipset. And that, that is the model... Of the, of the board that is used in my new elec. And all that's happening here is it's reading some data from some arbitrary frequency and just seeing if, if it loses any data. So it lost 12 bytes initially 
and now it, it's still running in the background, it's just not losing any information. So we can do control C and exit that. That is the driver installed.